<clears throat> Ramon, did you, did you write that song? Yeah, that's what I thought. You are a treasure. Merry Christmas. I have something that I, I uh, want to share with you from the Blackmer family. Scott wanted to let you know how much he appreciates, appreciates you. As you can imagine, it is a pretty hard Christmas for him today. And, um, but he wanted to tell you um, he appreciates his church family very much. Amen. I feel like <clears throat> when we say Merry Christmas, we mean it, but our hearts are hurting lately. Uh, am I the only one who's lost a lot of loved ones lately? It has been a very rough year. I really, quite honestly, uh, and with confidence, can tell you that 2021 is one that I never want to see again. It stinks. But God is good. You know, that was never the plan, right? Death and pain and suffering never was the plan. God in his love and wisdom uh, communicated early on, don't, don't do this. It's bigger than what you think. You know, when I, I'm by nature a very, I think, a very positive, somewhat... I don't know, happy guy. I don't like to be sad. I don't like to have pain. When I see people in pain, I, I, I literally think, say something funny. But then I'm like, that's stupid. Don't say something funny because you can't laugh this away. And I came to the conclusion that pain, the greater the pain, it's in direct response to the greater of love that you had for that person. Right? I, let's just be honest, sometimes you'll hear about bad things happening, and you go, that's terrible and tragic, and intellectually, you totally are there. But when someone near you hurts and suffers and dies, that's when it, the pain really comes. And I feel like that pain is a tribute and honor to that person. You're hurting because someone died? That means you love them very much. They were amazing people, and your time with them was special. And God doesn't like this either. You know, God isn't talking to them either. When, when we die, the Bible is clear they're sleeping. And God hurts just like you. A matter of fact, if God is love, according to 1 John 4, 8, He must be in the most pain in the universe. And he wants it to end. You know, the plan has always been that he would be our God and we would be his people. He actually built our brains as such that as, as we, we would, would look at him, the more and more we would look at him, the more and more we would be like him. He made us in, our, in his image to be like him. Can you imagine that? Some of you get this, uh, um, you, the more you hang around certain people, you start to act like them, maybe you dress like them, you might even comb your hair like them, or you'll pick up those little words. That's probably why some of the times that your parents would say, I don't want you hanging around that kid, because they didn't want you to catch what they had. Now, Jason, if you had a lot of people who couldn't come over to your house, then you probably know what's up there, right? No, I'm sure you were the model kid. Please have Jason come over to our house. But we're really hardwired to become what we behold, and we will be changed according to 2 Corinthians. But his plan was to be with us forever. It's still the plan, by the way. Here's the issue. Sin has caused a major problem. And so when he, believe, already in the beginning of the, of, the, of the Bible in Genesis, when God goes to talk to Adam and Eve after they had sinned, what did they do? They hid. They didn't want to talk to him. Can you imagine parents wanting to be with your children and they were scared of you and you did nothing 
to deserve that. I know that's happened to me a few times. I remember I did a few things and I heard the garage door opening and the sound of my dad's Ford pickup. And the last place I wanted to be was at home. My dad coming home, had, knowing nothing, he just worked hard for his family. And I'm like, when you come downstairs, <laughs> I'm in trouble. But I didn't give him the opportunity to be mad or not. I just assumed that he never would want to be with me. I don't know if anyone is, can relate to that. Have you ever looked in the mirror and said, no, why would anyone want to be around me? You look in the mirror, you don't like what you see, you're listening to the enemy, and you're hurting, and you're thinking the last person that would want to be with me is God. And I got news for you, his name is Emmanuel, which means God with us means he wants to be with you. So here's the question. How do you, I mean, he, he, he tried to talk to us himself, didn't work. He tried coming down on a mountain, we don't want to talk to you. He, brought, he sent prophets that said, hey, this is what I'm trying to say. We don't like you and killed them. How do you come into someone's life when they are scared of you and, and or are angry towards you? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that you come up with the most unoffensive thing on the planet. And you show up as a baby. You show up as a baby. And you grow up with these people. And you do nothing but love them. And your whole goal, your entire existence on this planet is to show them what your daddy's really like. If I were to ask you um, uh, why you would want to go to heaven, could you give me some reasons? I mean, like, seriously, you can talk to me. It's good. Give me some reasons. Give me, I, I, I'm a youth director. I don't, my, name's, my name's Chad. I should, I'm on this. Yeah, this is my name. Okay, my name's Chad. I'm the youth director. I like young people. Young people, what do you, why do you want to go to heaven? Give me some good stuff. Be with God. Amen. Anybody else? You want to fly? Who wants to fly? Totally, man. That would be sweet. You're going to use your arms? Probably won't need them, but like you could act like you need them. Fly anything else? Yes. Young lady. Yeah. You want to fly and have a bed? Okay, you don't. <laughs> sounds like you don't have a bed. Who is that? Who's her parents? Um, uh, so. <laughs> That would be my daughter. If you're watching, that was my daughter. <clears throat> she does have a bed. Come on over, find out. Yes, why do you want to go to heaven? Oh, yeah. Give me a name. Give me a, who's, who's on your list? What's that? Moses, you want to hang out with Moses? Yeah, that would be amazing, right? Yeah, absolutely. What, what do you got? No pain. Sister, every time I bend down to tie my shoes, I'm with you. Sciatica. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what's that? Be happy. I want to be happy. Amen. Here's what I want you to think about. Heaven is perfect, right? Yeah? Okay, I want to read this scripture to you. This is in Philippians chapter 2. We'll read verses 5 through 7. This just blew my mind recently. Uh, very somewhat of a, a popular verse, Philippians 2, 5 through 7. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Can I just give you this translation? He didn't like it in heaven. What? Now, now, before you throw me out as a heretic, read the scripture. He was God. He is God. He's on the throne. He's in perfection. And then he said, 
something's not right. I don't want to be here anymore. Let that set in. So he went and talked to his father. Holy Spirit, and they sat down and stood up. I don't know. He said, Dad, I want to go down there to be with them. Because if they can't be here, heaven's no good for me. Come on now. I don't know what kind of pain you're dealing with here at Christmas or struggles you're going through, but I do know this. God is with you. You are of so much value. God, when he gave his son, gave all of heaven. He could give no more. That's what the prophet says. That's how valuable you are. He said, well, why is he waiting? Why is he taking so long? Jonas knows. Jonas has given his heart to Jesus, and he wants to get baptized today. And Jesus said, I waited for you. I came down here for you. I was with you. And now listen to this. According to Colossians, oh boy, I love this text, Colossians 1.27, to whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Amen? The hope of glory in you. He was Emmanuel and came with us, and then for those who wanted him in, he came in you. No more pain, no more suffering. It's coming very, very soon. Jesus will come. You know what? Check it out. When God says we're going to go pick up the kids, all the heaven's coming. They're not going to stay back. So the Bible says there is silence in heaven for half an hour. They're like, we're in on this ride. And they are coming to get you. Here's the deal. Before he comes, and this is Jonas today. He's saying, Jonas, I'm so thankful that we're going to be together forever. Jonas, I need you to help me tell other people. Because there are people that don't know me. And I came down here to show them my dad. They killed me for it, but I rose again. And so they will too. But right now there are people who don't want to hear my name unless it's being used as a profanity in their presence. But, but just like I came as a baby, Jonas, you could knock on a door and you can get into most doors I can't. But I'm in you, Jonas. I'm in you. We're going to save some people. So there'll be a little more pain. There might be more weeping. But it's only going to last for the night. Because joy's coming in the morning. Amen? As you celebrate Christmas today, remember, as, as Mrs. Bernard so wonderfully put, The greatest gift you've ever received is Jesus. And the greatest gift you could ever give him back is your heart. May Jesus be in you today and for eternity. Amen. Jonas, I'm going to ask you.